Hey guys, John here from Bring the SEO. Today I want to talk about what many would consider one of the most unsexiest topics in terms of running an SEO agency. I'm sure you would probably all agree, and that is standard operating procedures. You know, standard operating procedures were something that I dreaded. Um, it, you know, and I'm, for most of us, well, those of us who are providing client services, these are you know, it's something that we all know that we need to do or should do, but quite often we we don't we just don't do it, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, and I've scribbled down a couple of notes here that I'll go through real quick. Firstly, they're boring. I mean, like I like I just mentioned a moment ago, this sitting down, the thought of actually sitting down and putting together standard operating procedures, oh, couldn't think of anything worse. So there's that, they're boring. Secondly, they take time. Um, the amount of time involved, I mean, this is, a, this is an SOP that I put together um, a few months back. And even though this is only three pages, I, this took me a few days to put this together just to go through um, and coordinate my efforts with uh, team members um, to ensure that I had everything right. <clears throat> and of course, you've got revisions and everything else. So... so um, yeah, they can take an enormous amount of time and quite often most of us, or many of us rather, are quite time poor. You know, we're busy, you know, and I talk about this um, no end, we're busy working in the business rather than on it. And this is a topic that I've, I've spoken about numerous times. But these things, putting these things together can take time. You know, I know I've spoken with people, oh, I've, I've spent a week putting that standard operating standard operating procedure together. So they take time. Um the other thing is that there's work involved. Like I said, in order to put this one together, I had to coordinate my efforts with team members. That meant jumping on Zoom, meetings, emailing back and forth, and just double-checking and confirming certain steps in, in an effort to try and be as comprehensive and accurate as possible. So there's some work involved. And lastly, and this is why I wanted to share, shoot this video and share these points with you, the constant updates Sometimes, and maybe you've experienced this too, sometimes you'll spend three days putting a standard operating procedure together only to find by the time you get to the end of it that something's changed and you need to go back and not start over, but um, make amendments. And that can be quite annoying. Okay, so what are the consequences of not doing standard operating procedures? And I'm sure uh, for a lot of you that perhaps you've experienced some of these outcomes as a, as a result of, you know, um, procrastinating and putting these things off, which, which let's face it, it's easy to do. If you don't, if you aren't using standard operating procedures, your internal operations are most likely going to be chaotic. You're going to be, you're going to have congestion. You're going to have delays. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be confusion. There's going to be all sorts of problems going on internally within your team, and this, of course, has a flow-on effect right down to um, the, not just your client results, but their experience too. So, um, you know, having standard operating procedures is definitely one of those things, again, that we all know that we need to do, but very few of us actually get them done. Now, um, having those, you know, experiencing those consequences and everything else is becomes problematic. So I want to share with you a simple solution that I've, um, in I've adopted, and this is something that I share with all of my students inside the, um, inside the group, and that is this. Instead of feeling overwhelmed, and I'm not sure if overwhelmed is the right word, but instead of thinking, you know, gee, I've got to put these standard operating procedures together, I've got to do 500 of them, it's going to take me six months, the amount of work and effort and time and everything else involved, oh, geez, it's just easy if I don't do it and we just kind of wing it as we go, we can make this work. Instead of doing that, jump in and shoot quick five-minute loom videos. Now, hear me out. Let's say that you have one area in your business, might be client onboarding or something, let's say, where there's constant issues, right? There's some there's, there's some kind of problem or constraint that keeps happening over and over again. Of course, you want to solve that one issue. So just pick one thing. Start with one thing, one area in your business where you can go, okay, got to solve this. I'm not, I don't have time to put something like this together right now, but I do have time to shoot a quick five-minute loom video. Jump in, shoot a quick five-minute loom video that you can share with staff 
either upload it to a staff portal or a dedicated um, section on Google Drive or something and share that with your staff. Execute quickly. Spend five minutes or less shooting a quick Loom video, upload it, share it with your team, and then start executing. Pretty much, probably in most cases, you'll find there'll be issues or constraints or some other problem where you'll need to jump in and amend that video. So not already, not only have you saved possibly days or weeks putting standard operating procedures again together, but you can jump in real quickly and do the same thing again within five minutes to adjust those issues. And you repeat this process until you get that, that Loom video dialed into the point where, okay, we've been following the same process now that's outlined in this quick five minute video. We can now take that information and we can then repurpose it into something like this, which is far more formal. Okay. Now, um, of course, running an entire business on short Loom videos doesn't sound all that professional, but the amount of time that you save initially, not only creating the videos, but also um, in terms of revisions, the amount of time you'll save will be enormous. And then, like I said, once that process is dialed in and you know it hasn't changed in, say, several months, then you can take it from being you know, an informal, quick throw together um, Loom video and you can turn it into something like this. Now you can either do it yourself, which I probably wouldn't recommend, or you can just hand it over to someone. Um, you know, there's plenty of talented people around that can take a video and turn it into a standard operating procedure for you. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share that with you. If you're sitting around dreading the thought, knowing that you need to create standard operating procedures or get them done within your business and you're putting it off, think about doing that. Jump in, Record a short five-minute Loom video, share it with your team, repeat that process until you've got all your processes dialed in and it no longer makes sense or you feel perhaps it's a little bit unprofessional to be um, referencing Loom videos and then you can spend the time putting um, something more formal together in um, you know something formal like this, proper documentation. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.